Welcome back to the deep dive. If you follow shows like Stock Explorers, you know how fast things move in tech and investing. Today, we're diving into Blaze Holdings, Inc. That's ticker BZAI. They're making waves with a uh, really big deal, a $120 million agreement. It looks like a major shift for them, moving from just R&D into serious commercialization in AI. Absolutely. And our mission today is to really understand this deal and, you know, what Blaze actually offers. We'll dig into their tech, their market position, um, the financials, and crucially, the big opportunities and the risks that you as someone watching this should probably be thinking about. Okay, so let's start big picture, this mm -hmm. physical AI revolution. What problem is Blaze actually trying to solve here? Because AI is kind of everywhere, but maybe not always where it needs to be instantly, right? Like a self-driving car needing to react now. That's exactly it. The physical AI revolution, it's really a shift in thinking. For a long time, AI meant sending data off to the cloud, to these huge data centers. But for critical stuff, real world stuff, that delay, it just doesn't work. Think of it like, like harnessing power right at the source, at the edge instead of piping everything miles away. So edge computing means the AI processing happens right there on the device or very close by. And there are some strong reasons for this shift. First, uh, real-time decisions, low latency, milliseconds count in safety applications, you know, no time for network lag. Second, data privacy and security. Keeping sensitive stuff on the device is just inherently safer. Helps with compliance, too. Third, cost and bandwidth. Sending massive amounts of data, super expensive, sometimes impossible if connectivity is bad. Edge computing avoids that. And uh, finally, sustainability. Edge process systems are designed to be really energy efficient, unlike those massive power-hungry data centers. Right, that makes a lot of sense. But you hear AI, you think NVIDIA, these giants. How does a company like Blaze find its niche? What makes them different? Yeah, that's key. They're not really trying to fight NVIDIA in the data center. That's not their game. NVIDIA GPUs are amazing for training huge models, complex stuff in the cloud. They're the like the big general purpose engines. Blaze is different. They're focused on a specific complementary area. Their main thing is this full stack solution, their own chip, the graph streaming processor or GSP, and their software, the AI Studio, and that GSP. It's built specifically for AI inference running the models at the edge. Low power, low latency for streaming data in real time. Think of it less like an all-terrain truck and more like a specialized, super efficient engine built for one particular job. And what's really interesting here is just how big this edge AI market is getting. It was valued around, what, $20 billion in 2023, projected to hit almost $270 billion by 2032. That's a compound annual growth rate of over 33%, massive growth. Blaze itself thinks its slice of that pie, its serviceable market, could be over $70 billion globally by 2028. And they see a huge opportunity, like $112 billion just in Asia. So yeah, specialized, but a huge potential prize. Okay, so physical AI revolution isn't just buzzwords, it's their strategic bet. Leading a new category where AI meets the physical world, factories, cars, defense, smart cities. Now let's really get into the news that sparked all this interest, the $120 million Starshine deal. Tell us about that. Right, this is the big one. The agreement is with Starshine Computing Power Technology. They're based in Hong Kong, focused on AI infrastructure in Asia. It's a minimum guarantee, $120 million in revenue for Blaze over the first 18 months. And the plan is to build these hybrid AI platforms. So they're integrating Blaze's GSP accelerators with existing GPU systems. It's not rip and replace. It's about making the existing stuff better, more powerful, more scalable. Complementary starting with smart cities, but looking to expand. And geographically, they're targeting fast-growing Asian markets, India, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, China. Crucially, the revenue starts hitting the books in uh, the third fiscal quarter of 2025 and should ramp up fast into 2026. That complementary approach seems smart. Instead of fighting the incumbents, they partner up, almost use the existing infrastructure as a sales channel. Is this Starshine deal a one-off? Or are there other big contracts building up? No, it's definitely part of a bigger picture, which is encouraging. There's also a $56 million smart city project in Southeast Asia that involves like over a quarter million intelligent cameras. Revenue there should start in Q2 2025. And they're getting traction in defense, too. There's an EMEA purchase order potentially worth up to $104 million. Plus, they've got access to a big U.S. Department of Defense purchasing agreement, uh, up to $249 million through a partner called Turbo Federal. Wow. OK, so add that all up. The announced pipeline is over $280 million now. That's a huge shift from being mainly an R&D shop with almost no revenue to having a clear path to substantial income. Let's zoom back in on the tech for a minute. The GSP, you said graph native 
What does that mean and why is it good for the edge? Okay, so graph native. Neural networks fundamentally are like complex graphs. Most processors have to translate that graph into something they understand, which adds overhead, uses more power, takes time. The GSP is designed to work directly with that graph structure. It's like a, it speaks the native language of AI models. More efficient. And its big trick is graph streaming. Instead of waiting to collect a big batch of data before processing, like filling a bucket, it processes data continuously as it flows in, like a stream. This allows for really parallel processing and cuts down latency dramatically. And the results are pretty compelling for Edge AI. Power efficiency, they're getting 16 trillion operations per second, TOPS using only about seven watts. Seven watts, that's incredibly low power for that kind of performance. Up to 60 times more efficient than some rivals for Edge tasks, they claim latency up to 10 times lower. They've shown it running multiple different AI models at the same time really fast with very low combined latency. And memory. They claim a huge reduction, like 50 times less need for external memory bandwidth. That saves power, cost, and space. Crucial at the edge. That sounds powerful. But, you know, great tech is useless if people can't actually use it easily. How does Blaze make this accessible? Good point. That's where their Blaze AI Studio software comes in. It's designed as a low-code MyVoc code platform. The idea is to let people who understand the problem say, a factory manager needing quality control build and deploy AI solutions without being expert programmers. It speeds things up massively days instead of months, potentially. It handles the whole workflow, data, deployment, managing the models. It's the software ecosystem that makes the hardware usable. And they have different hardware options too, right? Modules, cards. I also saw something about concurrent model execution. What's yeah. that about? Running multiple things at once. Exactly. The hardware ranges from small embedded modules like the Pathfinder to more powerful accelerator cards, the Explorer series for different needs. And yeah, concurrent model execution is a really neat feature of the GSP. It means one single chip can run several different AI models simultaneously. So imagine that factory again. One chip could be doing defect detection and monitoring equipment and checking for safety issues all at the same time, full speed. Super efficient for complex real world scenarios where you need multiple AI tasks running. Okay, switching gears to the financials. Crucial for any potential investor looking at this. Historically, tiny revenue, big losses during R&D. What's the financial picture look like now with these deals kicking in? Right. Historically, not much to see. Fiscal 2024, $1.6 million revenue, mostly consulting. Net loss over $60 million. Q1 of fiscal 2025 showed a bit of growth, about $1 million revenue from early product sales, but still a big loss, partly due to costs from their SPAC merger back in January 2025. Uh, the SPAC, that's how they went public, merging with the Shell company. But that merger also recapitalized them. As of March 2025, they had about $45 million in cash, very little debt. So the balance sheet looks healthier. But the real story is a forward guidance. This is what's driving the stock. For this fiscal year, 2025, they're guiding for $19 million to $50 million in revenue, a huge jump. And for fiscal 2026, they expect another massive leap, projecting $105 million to $140 million. I mean, that implies potentially a sevenfold increase from the midpoint of 25 to 26. It's mm -hmm. ambitious. They're also projecting pretty decent non-GAAP gross margins, aiming for the 46% to 50% range. All right, so if you try to value this based on past numbers, it looks crazy expensive. The mm -hmm. PS ratio would be astronomical. So how are people thinking of valuation here? It must be all based on hitting those future numbers, right? Exactly. You have to throw the trailing metrics out the window. They just don't apply to a company at this inflection point. The market is absolutely valuing Blaze on its forward potential. If you calculate a forward price to sales ratio using, say, the midpoint of that 2026 revenue guidance, $122.05 in their recent market cap, it starts to look much more reasonable, maybe even attractive compared to other high growth AI or semiconductor companies. If, and it's a big if they actually deliver on those projections. It's purely a bet on future execution. Which brings us nicely to the risks. Every exciting growth story has potential downsides. What are the main things that could go wrong here? What should you, as an observer or investor, be most worried about? Number one, without a doubt, is execution risk. Everything hinges on this. Can they actually scale production, deliver these complex systems on time internationally without major hiccups, any significant delays, performance issues, supply chain problems, or worse, if a major contract gets canceled, especially that Starshine deal, that would absolutely crush the projections and investor confidence. It's the biggest risk. Then there's partner and geopolitical risk, relying heavily on that Starshine contract in Hong Kong, deploying across Asia, including China. 
That brings in geopolitical factors. Yeah. U.S.-China relations, export controls on AI tech, Chinese regulations, those could all impact things. Plus, Starshine is a private company, so there's counterparty risk there too. Financially, while they have cash now, they burn through a lot during R&D. If revenue doesn't ramp up as expected, they could start burning cash again, maybe need to raise more money, potentially diluting shareholders. And lastly, look at the stock chart. It's been incredibly volatile. That's typical for these kinds of stories. It also has a relatively small number of shares available for trading a low float, which can make the price swings even wilder, high risk. Okay, a clear picture of the hurdles. But let's flip it. What's the bull case? What are the strongest arguments for why Blaze could succeed and be a huge winner? Well, the bull case is compelling too. First, the core technology. Their GSP seems to offer a real demonstrable advantage in performance per watt for edge AI. That's solving a critical need. And it's not just them saying. They've got big strategic investors, Denso, Samsung, Mercedes-Benz, who've put money in, presumably validating the tech. Second, that contract backlog, over $280 million announced. That's not just potential. Those are signed deals providing a clear runway for revenue growth over the next 18, 24 months. Third, the market itself. Edge AI is exploding, growing over 30% a year. That's a powerful tailwind lifting all boats. Fourth, valuation. As we said, if they hit those 2026 numbers, the stock might look cheap compared to peers today, suggesting room for significant appreciation. And finally, the team and backers. Experienced leadership with tech backgrounds aboard used to scaling public companies. Plus, big name investors like Franklin Templeton, Temasek, BlackRock, alongside the strategic corporates, that signals some serious confidence. Now, a key thing for you to watch would be how management balances those U.S. defense deals with the big Asian commercial contracts. That's a tricky geopolitical tightrope they have to walk. Right. So putting it all together, Blaze feels like a classic high-risk, high-reward situation. It's really poised at a crossroads. It could be a spectacular success or it could face major challenges. It's about transformation, not just small steps. Definitely. Which leads to the question, how do you track this? If you're interested, how do you monitor if they're actually delivering? There are a few key things to watch very closely. First, the quarterly earnings reports especially the next few Q2, Q3, Q4 of fiscal 2025. That's where you'll see the first hard evidence of whether revenue is ramping up as projected from these new contracts. Are they executing? Second, look for new contract announcements. Big deals, especially in the U.S. defense space or with other major auto or industrial players, would be positive signs, diversifying their revenue. Third, keep an eye on gross margins. Are they hitting that 46-50% target as product sales grow? And finally, watch operating cash flow. When does it flip from negative burning cash to positive? That's a huge milestone, showing they can sustain themselves financially. So the big question remains, as AI keeps evolving, will Blaze and their physical AI revolution truly change how intelligence interacts with our world? Could they be the next big success story at the edge? That's really the fascinating question for you to think about as this plays out. And if you found this deep dive helpful, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the show and give us a like and hit those notifications. That way you won't miss our next exploration into complex topics made simple.